was born November 15, 1934. She was the daughter of Nicholas and Josefina Garza, a couple who owned a cleaning business in McAllen, Texas. When Irene was younger, she grew up in Rio Grande Valley, which was south of Texas, but eventually her parents' cleaning business started becoming more and more successful. So they eventually were able to move to the northern part of the city, which was a more predominantly white middle-class area. Many things changed for Irene when she started attending McAllen High School. She became the first Latina drum majorette from McAllen High School, along with becoming Miss All South Texas Sweetheart of 1958. And eventually when she started attending Pan American College, she became homecoming queen. She was known for being a very, very sweet person that loved to help people, which is why it made sense that eventually she became a second grade elementary school teacher. Irene loved being a teacher. It was fulfilling for her to be able to educate some of the children that grew up in the area that she did. She found it very important to give her all to the students that she taught. She spent many long hours dedicated to her students, even extra time if necessary. She also took a lot of her money from her own salary to provide books and clothes to the students that needed further assistance. Irene was a very popular individual. She had a lot of friends and a lot of male suitors being that she was so beautiful. Although she was a very shy person, people definitely flocked to her. But another thing that was very important to Irene other than her students was her Catholic faith. She was very dedicated to her faith and made sure that she attended communion and mass daily. But Irene's wonderful and seemingly perfect life would soon come to an abrupt halt. It was April 16, 1960, the eve of Easter, and also Holy Week for the Catholic Church, which is a time where the church celebrates the Passion of Christ and has different celebrations. At the time, Irene lived with her parents and told them that she was going to confessions at the Heart Church in McAllen. But after Irene left, she sadly never returned. As time went on, Irene's parents started to become concerned, but they didn't want to immediately panic, assuming that she went to midnight mass, which was something that wouldn't be abnormal. But after a certain amount of time, around 3 a.m., they decided to contact the McAllen Police Department to report their daughter as missing. Eventually, the church was contacted, and being that Irene was so beautiful, there were several different parishioners that remembered seeing her there that night. Two days into the investigation of Irene's disappearance, the Garza family received a call from an unknown woman that claimed to be Irene and stated that she was alive and claimed to have been abducted and was held at a hotel near Hidalgo. But unfortunately, this was discovered to not be true. Not long after, pieces of Irene's belongings were discovered several hundred miles along McAllen Road, such as her lace veil, her purse, and her left shoe. The authorities then established a huge search over the area that involved police officers and volunteers. Then on April 21st, Irene's body was discovered miles away from where the belongings were found in a canal. Irene's loved ones were devastated, rightfully so, and the case went from a missing persons investigation to a homicide investigation. When the body of Irene was examined, they discovered bruises on the left side of her face, along with two black eyes, and it was also determined that she was not only sexually assaulted, but it was while she was already unconscious. But the cause of death was deemed to be suffocation. The investigation was difficult for the authorities due to the fact that any evidence that could have been left on the body by Irene's killer was more likely washed away while her body was in the canal. The authorities questioned close to 500 people during the investigation. This included people who knew Irene personally, along with known sex offenders that lived in the area. There was a $2,500 reward that due to a Texas businessman was bumped up to $10,000 for information pertaining to the case. But even though there were many people that were questioned, there was one person that became a strong person of interest, and that was 27-year-old Father John Veit, who was a priest at the church that Irene attended, and also was the priest that Irene spoke with during her last confession, the day that she went missing. Those that were waiting to have their confession with the young priest that day 
stated that Irene's confessional took longer than usual and that he left the sanctuary several times that day. It was also said by other priests that they observed what looked to be scratches on the hands of Father Fight after midnight mass and that when Father Fight conducted his confession with Irene that he took her to the church rectory which was highly unusual. But one of the biggest reasons that he was under suspicion was because there was a point after Irene's body was found that the canal was drained. And when it was, the investigators found a photo slide viewer that just so happened to belong to Father Fight. Father Fight was questioned and was given a polygraph test that he was said to have passed. He also originally denied the claims of him conducting Irene's confession in the church rectory but later admitted that he did, in fact, conduct Irene's confessional in the rectory. But the reason for his absence from the church at one point, he said was due to the fact that during his confessionals, he would often play with his glasses due to nerves, and that night he just so happened to break his glasses. He said that he left the church to go home and retrieve another pair of his glasses, and when he arrived, he discovered that he forgot his key, so he had to climb through the window to enter his home which is what caused the scratches on his hands. But things got even more sticky for the young priest when he was later accused of sexual assault by a woman named Maria America Guerra while attending a completely different church in the area. Father Fight went on trial and the original trial was ended in a hung jury. But later, Father Fight decided to plead no contest to a misdemeanor charge of aggravated assault to avoid a second trial and only had to pay a $500 fine. After the trial, he was sent to Assumption Abbey, which is a monastery in Missouri. But even after all of that, he was not put on trial for the murder of Irene, and eventually the case went cold. Until 2002, when Dale Tacchini, who was a monk at the monastery where Fright was sent to, went to the authorities and told them that an abbot at the monastery told him that Fight had confessed to him of attacking a young woman and killing another. He said he was told about the confession because he was requested a council fight to determine if fight was suitable to become a monk. When asked why he had not come forward before with this information, he stated that he didn't believe it was his job to judge fight for the confession, which is why the information went unreported for years, but that he could no longer keep the confession a secret. Afterwards, the case was reopened and one of the priests that worked for Fight around the time of Irene's murder, Father Joseph O'Brien, was contacted by Texas Ranger Rudy Jaramillo, who was the investigator over the case at the time. Within speaking to Father O'Brien, he stated that he did suspect that Fight may have had something to do with Gaza's murder at the time, but eventually he admitted that Fight had confessed to him that he had committed the murder. Not long after, the examiner that examined Fight's original polygraph tests came forward as well. He admitted that he questioned the original test that he was given, and that it was later discovered that he had not necessarily passed the test, but that it was inconclusive. It wasn't until 2004 that the case was brought to a grand jury, but when it was, neither Fight or O'Brien were subpoenaed, and the grand jury declined to indict. Rene Guerra served as district attorney in Hildago County at the time and was the one who didn't feel that it made sense to revisit the case, mainly due to the fact that Father O'Brien was suffering from dementia at the time and that the original investigators did a shoddy job in the original investigation of this case. It wasn't until 2014 that the case was observed again when Ricardo Rodriguez took the position as the new district attorney and vowed to bring justice to the Garza family. The case reopened in April of that year, but it wasn't until 2016 that Fight was arrested in Scottsdale, Arizona at the age of 83. After he had stepped away from being a priest, he got married and started a family, living a life away from the crimes that he had been accused of. The defense team requested for a $100,000 bond for Fight due to the fact that he was suffering from stage three bladder and kidney cancer. Prosecutors requested a $750,000 bond, but the judge set the bond at $1 million. The trial was ongoing for several months and rescheduled a few different times. The attorneys of fight also filed for change of venue 
due to the fact that the trial was taking place in a county where he had already been well known and stated that they didn't believe that he would receive a fair trial, but this was denied. After a long trial, John Bernard Fite was finally convicted for the murder of Irene Garza and sentenced to life in prison on December 8th of 2017. He lived out the remainder of his life incarcerated at the W.J. Estelle unit until his death on February 12th, 2020.